I remember one day being in a, uh, a part, uh, being in a parking lot of a Burger King, looking at my uh, bank account with $5 in it, figuring out if I could either get gas or if I should get food from Burger King. Um, I think I chose gas. I don't remember, but that's the position that it, it puts you in. Um, and mentality wise, you feel like I can't talk to anybody because they're just going to say you're negging out, figure it out. So I didn't tell anybody my situation because I didn't want to burden anybody else. And I knew what the conversation would be. So um, had to figure it out. I learned to look for little clues. He bought himself a new car. It was a used like 2015 Nissan. I'm like, you're an owner. Why don't you go buy a Ferrari, whatever it is? Like, it just, none of that stuff happens. They talk about it, but it doesn't happen because they don't really have the money. It's all, it's all just, it's all smoke and mirrors. Mike, I'll tell you what, I've heard probably over 70 interviews at this point, five years in, and every one of them's unique. Every one of them is a horror story. And just looking over the email that you sent me a long time ago, I feel like this could be a script of some type of Hollywood horror story. Um, and the reason that we're talking today primarily is uh, this just shows you how important a subject line is, is an email in an email, because we get dozens of messages a week and your subject line nine years in smart circle. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not a joke. That's not a lie, right? Nine nope, years. Just, uh, I think I was, I started February of 2012 and I left uh, in early 2022. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, wait, no, 2013. I'm sorry. I would have been 10 2013. Years. 2013. Yeah. So friend. 2013 to 2022. Okay. Um, and, you know, just reading over your message, I feel like, I don't know if, you, if you've seen the meme, like the Charlie Day meme where he's smoking a cigarette and he's getting all frazzled trying to, trying to decipher these connections. I'm just reading through this. I'm trying to figure out. It's so, for me reading it, it's hard to explain what you went through. Like yeah. I could, I could imagine now after spending nine years of your life trying to figure out what was that <laughs> that I went through. Yeah. So, so I'm sure we'll get into all that today, but, um, but thank you for wanting to share your story. Let's start a little bit early. Um, February, 2013. So for context, I started in smart circle in, uh, I believe it was August of 2013. So you, okay. the beginning of your career actually was before my life in smart circle before I yep. even knew what this was. And you identified several red flags, looking back, several red flags yeah. that um, I think to anyone who's watched these videos, they've heard before, but yep. kind of take us through that beginning of how you got into this in the first place. Yeah, so it's going to sound like, unfortunately, a lot of other people. Um, I was looking for a job. I think I, at that point I was unemployed. I was previously with Hertz Rent-A-Car. Um, I was unemployed after that for about six months. So I got to a point where I was like, all right, I got to get something. Like I, I, I was, I think I was 25 at that point. So I got to get, I got to find something. I got to get moving with, with a career. So um, I got a, a phone call from the admin at that point. Um, she said, they loved my resume. Everything looked good. Asked me a couple basic questions and booked me in for the interview. Um, I, I went on the interview. I believe the interview was probably the next day. Um, I went on the interview. Uh, the manager slash owner, whatever we want to call them. Um, pretty cool guy. I mean, I was with him for, for nine years. So pretty cool kid. He was probably three or four years older than me. Um, we had a lot in common. We both played baseball. We liked a lot of the same things. But Typical first round interview, just basic questions. I left there with honestly no real idea of what was going on, like like most people say. Um, and then I remember when I got home, my parents obviously asked me how the interview went. I said, good, I guess. Um, I got home and I looked up the company and I couldn't find uh, like my application or anything like that. Uh, and I looked up on LinkedIn and I couldn't, or not LinkedIn, um, I forget what I used, probably ZipRecruiter, one of those couldn't find anything. So I was like, well, that's a little weird. So that was red flag number one. And then 
I went in for the interview. The second round was, I believe, like two days later. Um, they were doing days of observation at that point, but mm -hmm. I guess, unfortunately for me, there were no leaders in the office to do one. Um, if there were, probably would be a different story. But mm -hmm. um, I sat down for the interview with, uh, with my manager again, or my soon-to-be manager. Um, he literally pulled out a piece of paper and drew the four steps of the business on it. And what obviously whatever he said got me excited. I mean, I saw I saw the money and I wasn't told it was commission. I wasn't told it was door to door, any of that stuff, which is seems to be pretty standard back then. But everything kind of added up. Uh, obviously, I was attracted by the uh, the fourth box, the ownership box and yeah, kind of something I always wanted to do. Like, I think a lot of people would agree they want to run a business of some sort and that just got me excited and that interview was like 20 minutes long it wasn't anything crazy I took the little piece of paper home and I started the week later so hmm. yeah I mean looking back at it I probably should have looked at those red flags but like I said I needed needed to find yeah. something and that kind of checked some of the boxes for me so I gave it a shot yeah and I know that I've said this to other people I've talked to there are a lot of red flags here, but a lot yeah. of these, they're not going to be obvious to people really, unless you're looking for them. Exactly. Um, exactly. Especially Good back point. then. Because again, full context, this is February, 2013. Um, I don't know what, if any resources about smart circle are even out on the internet. I don't there know was, when I, I think was, there was a ripoff report. Yeah. There was likely the, at least one of those. Yeah. On the companies on the, the name of the company that I interviewed at. Okay. Um, I don't know if I found, I probably, I mean, I know I found it eventually, but I don't think I found it early on, but again, yeah. I, I think I was just so looking for something so desperate at yeah. that point where I was like, all right, I got to find something. Sure. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, another red flag that you briefly mentioned was you had no idea you were going door to door or would be going door to door in your day to day oh, clearly, responsibilities. Yeah. And you actually didn't even find that out until you were being driven to the first well, location, right? I remember that day like it was yesterday. So my first day um, was a Monday. So my first day, we did like a, an orientation type day. So we were in the office from like nine o'clock till, till noon. Um, so they introduced us to a couple of the, the other people in the office, kind of gave us the pitch, all that stuff. Um, and then the guys left for the day. So I asked, I remember asking my manager, I'm like, Hey, where's everybody going? He's like, no, they're going out for the day. So in my head, I was like, Oh, are they going home or what are they doing? No idea. So he's like, you'll find out tomorrow. And keep in mind, this is February. So February in Jersey gets pretty cold, snow, rain, whatever it is. So yeah. next day, um, same thing, come into the office, shirt and tie kind of stuff. Actually, I was probably wearing a suit at that point. I don't know. Um, and then my, my, my team leader, he's like, hey, you ready for lunch? I'm like, sure, cool. Where are we going? This is awesome. He's like, we're going to Subway. I was like, all right, cool. I could take a sandwich, whatever it is. And then he asked me on the way there, he's like, did you bring comfortable shoes? I'm like, well, sure. The shoes I have are comfortable. Why? He's like, well, we're going to be walking. So we we drive out to the to the field. Um, he parks the car in the middle of the neighborhood. I'm thinking we're going to his house or something. No mm -hmm. idea what's going on. And then I'm with another guy that started the same day as me. And he's like, are we, what are we doing? Are we knocking on doors or something? He's like, yeah. Like, what'd you think we were doing? And then I think it was, it was probably, it was like 20 degrees outside. We're wearing full suits, freezing. And you, know, you got three guys knocking on doors, two of them in full suits, probably kind of awkward, but that was when I learned it was door to door. Hmm. Yeah. The guy, you know, what did you think we were doing? Literally no idea because you, you have not marketing. told us anything about yet yeah, marketing, we're right? Doing That's marketing for a supposedly. home company. Yeah. 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 And this, um, I don't think we've had anyone I've seen in the comments, I, I, I laugh sometimes because people just write power home remodeling in the mm -hmm. comments, but um, I, I, you might be the first person we've talked to who's worked on that campaign. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't so really, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. Power. I, I'm not going to lie. Like I, I, I'd like their company. Like they're a good, they're a, one of the top home improvement companies in the, in the country apparently. And I really don't have anything bad to say about, about them. It's just like, 
And it's the same thing with a lot of the clients that I was working on. I know there's some horror stories, like with the people doing the charities and all that. Like I can definitely see how people can not like that. But a, a lot of the clients that I was working on were were pretty good. So power was there. Well, they are. They are their home improvement company. So roof, siding, windows, those kind of things. And we were doing a pretty simple job. We were generating leads for their sales force. So mm-hmm. we would knock on the door, probably 60 to 80 houses a day. And people were were pretty receptive. Like seeing my first day, my team leader, he was a pretty good sales guy, but we wrote like six appointments. So yeah. that got me pretty excited. And it was a pretty simple process. We write the lead and then one of power sales reps follows up on it and sees if they can get work done. And I looked up reviews of power. We would run into people that had work done by power and had a lot of, I mean, yeah, you'd probably sprinkle in some complaints here and there yeah. about any company, but a lot of good stuff from people. So that kind of got me excited. That's why I kept coming back, I guess. Yeah. So how were you, based on what you were told, how were you supposedly compensated? Because I know all yeah. these sign up campaigns, whether it's home remodeling or um, internet, phone, mm-hmm. whatever, even if it's like the, <laughs> the ADT security guy coming to my house a couple of weeks ago, um, what is your, what do you have to do? How are you compensated for the, uh, for that campaign? Yeah, good question. So I I remember uh, when I went like for the second round interview, all my manager wrote on the four boxes, he wrote entry level four to $600 a week. Um, team leader was like 800 to a thousand dollars a week. Assistant manager was a thousand dollars a week. And then ownership was like 150k plus yeah i wasn't told it was commission i wasn't told it was i assumed it was salary because that's all it said there um and then my team leader when we wrote the uh the appointments he was like yeah i get 180 dollars for every appointment we write so i did the math and i was like 180 times six like that's some pretty good money right there for one day and he didn't correct me he was like yeah that's really good money so i'm like wait so you can make 500 plus dollars a day here like let's go. And then obviously I learned not the case. So the way we did get paid, we got paid when power sales rep got to the home and did a, did a demo as they called it. So the demo percentage was about one out of four. So if you write four appointments in a day, you can expect one of those to go through. So um, still, I mean, doing six in a day, you, if you do that every day, you're making decent money, but it's not always the case. Yeah. And I'm just thinking like logistically so okay let's say you you knock on let's say 80 door on a good Mm -hmm. day 80 doors a day Mm -hmm. let's say you write up six six confirm and then out of those six maybe two one to two will accept so you're still really really getting paid only for the one to two yeah instead of the six so basically a lot of that hours and hours and hours of work was for nothing yeah when you do uh when you break it down you do the math like if someone and that was the average like the average person was getting two to three appointments a week so Mm -hmm. 360 like the average paycheck back then was 360 bucks Mm -hmm. so if you do the math with the hours we put in you're barely i don't even think you're making minimum wage at that point yeah yeah probably not if you think about like all the travel and walking and stuff yeah um okay so Commission based, you didn't know that going in or weren't told that going in. Nope. Door to door, weren't told that going in. But obviously, there was something about this day to day that worked for you that, yeah. like you said, kept you coming back. So, yeah. like over the next year, as you started to build a team and, and qualify, uh, get to qualifications for the next tier, mm-hmm. you know, what kept you there? Because I know that there was. Uh, I know you you told a little bit of a story here about um, you were paired up with another new start and yeah. he ended up quitting. Yeah. Um, and he asked you if you wanted to. And it's like, it's one of those sliding door kind of things. Like if you had said yes and gone, I probably wouldn't be talking to you today. Exactly. Yeah. That's like, if someone could ask like, Hey, do you have any regrets in your life? It'd probably be that like, yeah, yeah I left my wallet in my team leader's car and that's why I couldn't leave. So uh, to answer your first question, the things that kept me coming back for, let's say, nine years, it, a very simple answer. It was the people I was working with. Okay. Um, I mean, some of the guys and girls that I've met along the way, I, I'm still friends with. 
I know, um, like the interview you did with Dan, the, mm -hmm. the owner a couple of years ago, I think it was, um, he kind of nailed it on the head. He's like, I don't talk to really anyone that's still in the business, but I talk to a lot of the guys and girls that are out of it. So yeah. same thing for me. I mean, one of my good friends I'm playing golf with on Sunday that I started with nine years ago. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's, it's the people um, yeah. I'd really, and I can't say all bad things about it because I've definitely have some good things. Like I enjoy training. I enjoy coaching, teaching people and just seeing other people grow and seeing someone get their first lead or first sale. Like that's what kept me going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the second part of that question, the, the kid that was that, so very rarely, I mean, one of the rules in the business is don't let new starts work together. Yeah. because they're going to play what we call negative volleyball. Um, and <laughs> he definitely was doing that. It was super sketchy. Like I didn't want to go training again my second day. Cause I just saw my team leader, write Six leads. So I was like, all right, I know I can do this. Like, just let me go. Um, but they wouldn't let me go on my own. So they paired me with the other kid that started. And he said he wanted to do the same thing. Like he wanted to go on his own too. As soon as my team leader left, it was, it was like a Jekyll and Hyde moment. He was like, man, this is stupid. It's cold out. This sucks. I was like, okay, like calm down. Like we just saw our team leader write six yesterday. Like we got this. Like I turned into his team leader. It seemed like real quick, yeah. but um, an hour in, he calls his buddy who was local and he said, Hey, I'm, I'm getting him to pick me up. He's going to drive me back to the office. And I quit. He's like, you should come. And like I just said, I, I left my wallet in my team leader's car and I, didn't have I just couldn't call him to say hey man I'm done mm -hmm. so I was like yeah no just just go I'll be here I'll be fine by myself and yeah I don't know looking back on it I I probably wish I had my wallet but yeah it is what it is can't yep. can't change it right um okay so about a year goes by so we're we're in uh in February ish we're in early 2014 so I remember uh, in early 2014, I had just helped open up an office in uh, Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. We were the we were one of the first grocery offices in the Chicagoland area. So we were nice. going to the Jewel Osco's and um, there are no Kroger's up there. So it's primarily Jewel Osco's selling crap, you know, yeah, infomercial stuff. Yeah, I see what uh, some of the, the retail guys are, are selling. And I'm just like, man, I had it easy with roof siding windows and Verizon <laughs> Fios and stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. Cause I mean, e even though it's door to door, which everybody hates, you're at least selling a product that I think a lot of people will get use out of if they need it. And yeah. nobody needs the crap I was selling. That's for yeah. sure. Um, okay. So you're, you're in there for about a year. Um, you, you're building your team. You're kind of getting excited about um, being promoted. You know, what were some of the conversations that were taking place between you and your manager around that time? Yeah. So we were talking about like expanding and Hey, this territory needs, needs a manager and you should go here, all that, like power home remodeling is going to be huge and all that. And it was really just like big picture conversations about like next steps, those kind of things and kind of solidifying the team that I had and who might want to expand um, all those kind of things. And really looking back on it, what those conversations do is, they they just keep you going. They keep you excited because it, it's creating that vision of of what could happen or what could be. Yeah. Um, so that that's really what the conversations were, and that obviously kept me going. I love how you said what could happen or what could be because yeah. I feel like the entire Devil Corp universe is built. That's on all that. it is. Because if, that if is you get. Key. If you get one person, one yeah. person out of a million that makes a million dollars off this business, they use that as evidence and say, look, it could happen. Yeah, It's look, only one in a million. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it, like, that's, that's part of the sale that the, uh, like, that's one thing I learned too. And the, the owners are selling, selling every day. They're selling the opportunity. They're selling the vision. That's, that's what they do. Yeah. Uh, that's what I had to do. That's what you have to do when you're building a team. Like, Every day, it's just like, hey, like think about next year this time or where you could be six months from now. And that's that's what was done. So like in February of 2014, same kind of conversations like, hey, where do you want to open up? What do you want to do? Like, what do you want your company name to be? All these kind of things mm -hmm. just to keep you going. And 
I'm sure you remember one of the things that they dangle in front of you, apart from the salary or the, you know, the money, the six figures is, uh, well, you get to management, you don't have to go to the field anymore, right? Yeah. You can just stay in the office. Uh, but once you got promoted to at least assistant management, you even found out that that's not even true. Yeah, that was a, a bit of a shock. And that was the first day. So I did my my little welcome to management speech, like all that kind of stuff. The guys leave for the day. I didn't have to cut territory or organize car rides. I had people that did that finally. Um, I'm thinking, cause what's told you is like, you just said, like you stay back in the office and you see this with your, with the, the owner the whole time. Um, you're always like, I was always asking my owner, I'm like, Hey, where do you go? Like when we leave, he's like, Oh, I don't know. I might go to the, I might go home. I might go to the mall. I I'm, I'm an owner. I, I run my own business. I can do whatever I want. Um, looking back at that probably should have went to the field a little bit more to make the business some money, but. <laughs> that's what they say that's the, like they they lure you in like the money is attractive obviously but so is the free time that they say you can have which we all know doesn't happen but um but yeah so the guys leave for the field uh i end up having to buy dinner or buy lunch for for everybody in the office which was fine it was a little like like hey welcome to management buy lunch for us i'm like oh darn okay uh, I didn't really make much money at that point. So that kind of hurt a little bit, but um, yeah. Then the conversation of like, Hey, don't, how, how do I get paid now? Cause we're told it's a thousand dollars a week plus as a, uh, as a manager. But I learned a lot that first day, like me and the other assistant manager who got promoted like two, two, probably two months before me, he's like, all right, let's go to the field. I'm like, to do what? Like, I thought we'd just hang out here, maybe do some interviews watch TV, wait for the guys to come back. He's like, no, like we got to go to the field. Like we're the best ones. I'm like, I thought we didn't have to anymore, but not the case. <laughs> Definitely a little culture shot or a little surprise there. Cause you get so excited for something yeah, and then it doesn't happen. So you had already invested a year into this and, you know, anyone who has any background in this scam knows that that's kind of the, the, the yardstick there yeah. is like after a year you're kind of ready to to move up or yep. ready to get out basically yeah uh, and you of course were not ready to get out you were successful <laughs> you'd just been promoted to assistant manager uh so as as much of a shock as that was were you thinking any thoughts about well maybe this isn't what i thought it was great question so i think for me that goes that just goes back to my personality. Um, I looked at it and it's the reason I started. All my manager had to do when doing the interview and keep me going was show me that fourth box and what it could be. So the, the ownership side. So I just looked at that as just another little hurdle in my journey to management. I was like, all right, darn, like, well, at least it's not as bad as going to the field when it's raining outside. So I just looked at it as another another little hurdle that I had to jump over to get to management. And that's kind of the story of my career. That's how I looked at all the hurdles that I went through. Yeah. Yeah. And something else you mentioned too, because after a while, your manager wanted to switch or or was switching. We'll get into yeah. wanted to, but was switching campaign. So you were you were going from Power Home to uh Verizon, mm -hmm. Verizon Fios. You were kind of told that it wasn't his decision. Yeah. It was somebody else's decision, which again, yep. red flag, right? Yep. Yeah. So, so this was probably going into the spring, summer of, of 2014. So uh, everything in my, in, in my nine years there was just per, like terrible timing for me. It seemed like, so yeah, I have, I have a team of probably, I'd say 15 to 20 people, a bunch of good people wow. in there. And we're ready to like, we're ready to, to move on. We're ready to I don't know, open up wherever we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like you said, Verizon Fios uh, comes along and we hear rumors of it. Like, hey, they're testing Verizon in this market. Like if it blows up, like we want to jump on that and all that stuff. And I thought that my manager could just be like, all right, let's decide to do Verizon. But not the case. We were, I don't know if he was forced to do it, but it was highly suggested that we switched the entire office to Verizon Fios. And 
he told me that and I was like, oh, darn, I don't really want to learn a new client at this point. We have all these guys doing really well on power. Why, why mess that up? So my idea was, why don't we just have half the office do Verizon and my half do power? I thought that was a completely reasonable thing. And looking back at it, probably would have been pretty profitable for him because we would have had two teams or two clients under one office. So that would have made sense. But um, yeah, it was pretty much forced or suggested that we all switch to Verizon. And that's that ended up happening. Um, just like with any change in anything, some people aren't meant for it. So I think the office went from, we'll say 20 people down to like, whoop, down to like five over the course of a month. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to, <laughs> had to rebuild on a completely different client. So mm -hmm. I go from my excitement level here, like, oh my God, we're about ready to open up to now it's like back down to like a new team leader kind of sure. thing. Do you know, or were you told who made the decision ultimately? Um, oof, probably our national. Okay. Probably heard the name Ken a couple of times. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, looking back on it too, I mean, I don't probably, I mean, I don't know. I never got to the, to a point where I was in those conversations, but it probably came down to, to a money thing. And we had the, we had the team to, to do it. Um, mm -hmm. I guess it just shoved the power home remodeling campaign under the bus, but it was probably a money decision there. Like, Hey, Verizon, obviously Verizon has endless resources. So mm -hmm. I, I understood, unfortunately, I understood the decision. I understood what the, the game plan was, but mm -hmm. I did like my idea as well. And I just didn't like that people were forced to, to train on something that maybe wasn't right for them. Like there were guys that could do power that just mm -hmm. couldn't do Verizon. Um, and they'll say, well, it's not the, the, they'll say it's not the campaign, it's the person and all that. But yeah. just like, it's not the territory, it's the bum in the territory, all that. But yeah, um, yeah like I, I, I do wish we could have stayed on power because I think it would have been, been great. But unfortunately it wasn't my owner's decision. Yeah, which is ironic considering they're an owner. Right. Supposedly, but um, well, you run your own company, you can make your own choices, but yeah. Yeah. And um, you had mentioned an under the bus moment, and I think you were thrown under the bus, actually, it seems like, too, because not only were you kind of forced to take on this campaign, um, but you ended up getting kicked off the campaign, supposedly, yeah. uh, for, for things <laughs> you yourself are responsible for, right? Yeah, so that was, I don't know how long after, we'll say, I don't know, maybe that was a year after we started the campaign, but everything was going smoothly. And this was the second bad timing in my career there. So I had a team, no joke, probably of 20 to 25 people. Like it was one of, my, one of my best teams. Like I still remember some of those guys, like some, some great guys and girls on that team. We were having a blast. We were doing really well on Verizon, all that kind of stuff. And my manager pulls me inside, one, like in his office one day. He's like, hey, I got, got good news and bad news for you. So I'm like, all right, bad news first. He's like, yeah, um, you're getting kicked off the Verizon campaign. I was like, what? That's a joke. Okay, what's the good news? He's like, no, I'm not kidding. Like, they're kicking you off the campaign. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I need more here. He's like, yeah, no, you, you know what you did. I'm like, no, I, I don't. This is why we're having this conversation. He's like, well, you, you committed fraud. I'm like, keep going. Like, let's hear this. <laughs> so apparently what happened is they said I committed social security fraud, which I was like, well, that sounds serious. He's like, yeah, you signed someone up, uh, you checked their credit and they didn't want the service. I was like, I really have no idea what you're talking about. Cause the whole social security fraud, like there was that going on in other offices. Like I, I know some of the videos you've done, some, someone mentioned that. Um, yeah. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. It turns out it was some, someone that I signed up. I did sign the person up. They did want Fios, but apparently they knew some of the, the, the higher ups at Verizon and they wanted a better deal. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, and this is true. He called me. He, I gave, I gave him like, almost the top of the line package. He wanted everything. This is after I signed him up. He calls me and I, I, 
I did chuckle a little bit. I was like, sir, I, I can't get you that for free. And he's like, all right, well, I'm going to call the people I know at Verizon. And I was probably like, okay, like do what you have to do. So apparently he did what he had to do and he filed a complaint against me somehow and it ended up getting me kicked off the campaign. But the other thing that I was really upset about with my manager and he said, three strikes, you're out. I'm like, well, what the hell? What, what were the other two strikes? He was like, well, I didn't think I would have to tell you, but you had two other complaints through the course of the last six months. So I was like, you didn't think maybe tell me that? He's like, ah, I didn't think we'd get to this point, but here we are. Um, good news though, is you can switch back to power because that's coming back. I was like, all right, well, that's good news because I know power like the back of my hand. So what can we do now? He's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I have a team of 20 people. Be kind of crappy if they just said, hey, Mike's just switching. You guys stay. He's like, well, no, that's exactly what's going to happen. You have to rebuild. I'm like, oh, here we go back here, back to square one again. Um, not fun conversations having they're not having not easy conversations with the guys that were on my team because they were like, yeah. what's going on? And the weird thing that I was thinking over the last couple of weeks is how a lot of the, like you would think the the owner would have the conversation and explain why I'm switching back to power or something like that, but they leave. They, they're no low, nowhere to be seen at that point. They don't, they don't want to have the weird conversations. They don't want to have yeah. the hard conversations. They put it on the leaders and they say, it's your fault. Take accountability, all that kind of stuff. So I guess I had to, I just had to explain to everybody, Hey, this is what's going on. You guys are in good hands with, with the owner. Um, yeah. I had to make it sound like it was my choice. Yeah. Um, which it wasn't obviously, but yeah, that sucked. <laughs> like I could have, that was the, the second uh, opportunity to get to ownership there, but obviously it didn't happen. It's so frustrating because these these people that want to be owners just they, they they have this title given to them from smart circle you're now an owner which they're not but that's the yeah. title but they don't want any of the responsibilities of that a good manager more. would have the number one would have let you know the first complaint months ago it's not oh i didn't think we'd be here in six months if it's three strikes, you're out and you already have two complaints, but you don't tell the person that's on you, dude. That's, that's horrible management. That's horrible ownership Agreed. of a company. Agreed. And, and, and present it in a way, you know, you bring someone into the, the office, you sit them down, you might have a little small talk first. And then you say, so, so the reason I brought you in here today, not you're being investigated for fraud yeah. and then leave it at that. no give me more. Oh, well, really? That's not enough for you. I mean, like, what do these people think that these yeah. conversations are just gonna uh, so end it, themselves? It's ridiculous. It, it, it's exactly like you just said. It's a weird, there's some weird accountability going on. It's like, we, we always talked about how we want to take extreme ownership and extreme accountability and all that. But when, when stuff hits the fan, it's always, all right, the fingers are pointing somewhere else. And it usually ends on the team leaders, unfortunately, because they are the ones spending the most time with, with their, their, their team and all that. And it's just, they're the ones that are like next in line for management. So it's like, well, Hey, if you want to have these tough conversations, that this is a really easy out for them. If you want to be an owner, you have to get ready for these tough conversations. So you should have them now. Yep. But that's, that's what they would keep doing is like, you have this conversation or it's your fault or something like that. And it's like, well, hey, get used to it. That's what happens at ownership. And I heard those conversations too. The the regionals and nationals are very good at doing that too. So, I mean, we have enough evidence, I think, over five years to say that most of the claims made by these people are just outright lies. I mean, like yeah. you you had mentioned earlier, uh, you know, we're taught that it's not the person, and it's not the territory. It's the it's the pitch. It's the campaign. It's the systems, yeah. right? Yeah. But we know that's not true. I mean, we know that Chattanooga, Tennessee, nine out of uh, 10, I think 10 out of the last 10 offices that opened up in Chattanooga closed. That's what the yeah. Juicy Rhino podcast is all about. Yeah. Um, so it is territory. Yeah. And it is um, and it is the people. I mean, it, it has nothing to do with the systems. It has nothing to do with the pitch. You might if you're in a low income area, I was in South Chicago selling my kitchen crap. Yep. And A, no one could afford it, 
or B, they were like, they were on assistance. So they were like, oh man, if I had my own money, I would, I would love this, but I just can't afford it. If you encounter a hundred, 200 people a day who are on fixed incomes and you're trying to talk them into shelling out $40 for a kitchen appliance that nobody needs, and then That's, the conversation yeah. you'd have with your owner is no, mm -hmm. you're just, you're, you're negging out as they say, yep. and it's your fault. And yep. then that, that messes with your head. You're like, how is this my fault that they can't afford it? Well, no, you're just complaining about your territory. And then they hit you with what they're, they're supposed to tell you. It's like, oh, it's not the bum in the tea or it's the bum in the tea, not the tea. Like all these rehearsed things that they're supposed to say, that's what they hit you with. They don't actually find the solution. And it's funny you mentioned that because I actually, one of the first uh, times we actually visited Power Home Remodeling's headquarters, they had, um, it was like a little, they had a little Excel, um, I'm sorry, PowerPoint presentation. And they had historical evidence of towns where they get more leads than other towns. So I see that, all my guys see that. And they're like, wait a second, that we we're told it's not the territory, but here they have a chart of historical data that it is the territory. And the, the guy running the presentation is like, yeah, we won't send our teams here. We'll crush this area. And I'm just like, why can't we be on the same page? Like, why is it? It's just because they don't want to have those conversations. So they just put the blame on the other person. Yep. If you're not making them money, you're doing something wrong. And even and though they can't find the solution for it. I never, I really never understood that because if, if I was, if, I mean, and truth be told, if I was the manager and I know there's some towns that are historically worse than others, mm -hmm. why would I like financially, it would be smart not to go to those towns, but no, it's not, it's not the town, but we have evidence saying it is like, we're trying to make money here. Why don't we go to the areas that historically make the most money? It just makes sense, but they want to, they want to screw with the mentality of the people or mm -hmm. the, of the employees. So down the road, you, you know, you're still in lit, like we've talked about, you had a couple opportunities that just didn't, didn't work uh, in this, but you're still involved. Um, I guess an office was needed uh, and you, you were kind of offered <laughs> the, the idea to open up an office in a way. I was, um, I was told we needed an office in South okay. Jersey, but uh, learned that wasn't the truth. So okay. trying to think what year this was, probably 2016, 2017. Okay. Um, I rebuilt my team um, on the Power Home Remodeling campaign. We, were, we actually moved to an, a new office at that point in central New Jersey. So same area, nice office. Um, I get the team back up to probably 15, 20 people again. And another thing too, is I don't want to brag or anything, but I was the ones building, I was the one building the team. Mm -hmm. So if anyone who, anyone who's in an office right now, or they've been in an office, like there should be probably like three to five team leaders and they all are building their own teams. But my manager would always just is build like one, one ladder, not multiple, like wouldn't spread out at all. So I started seeing that. I'm like, wait a second, I can't take my whole team. I have to leave some of these, these guys and girls with, with my owner. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I hate saying that with my manager. Um, like it, it's not, it's not fair to me. It's, it's not fair. So he tells me that uh, power needs an office in South Jersey. Um, before that happened though, he hired this one guy, um, who was like, think of your quintessential, like wall street guy from like the eighties or nineties. This is <laughs> what this guy was. Um, and no fault of his own. He, he was I, in conversations with him. He was, he was a good guy. Um, he hires this kid has a, a, all the sales experience in the world, all that kind of stuff. So me being me, knowing how the business works, I'm assuming he's going to go through the same training program that everybody goes through. No, no, no. Pump the brakes. So this kid never went, to, he went to the field maybe once or twice in the course of like three or four months. He comes in and he's like already put into an assistant manager role. Um, he's doing interviews. He's running morning meetings. Um, and credit to him, like a lot of the stuff that he had was really good. but. 
he didn't know any better. Like he wasn't told that this is how the business is supposed to work. But everybody that was in the office, they're like, why is this guy doing this? Why isn't he doing what we're doing? And I said that to my manager. He's and he tells me he's like, no, you're just complaining about him that he's he's good and all that. But I'm like, well, this isn't fair. Like this doesn't make any sense, but whatever. So my manager tells me that they need an office in South Jersey. Um, so I take two, two girls down there, uh, two, they were really good on the power campaign. So we were ready to go. So typically uh, the way an expansion should work is your manager works with you to figure out who wants to go, where you're going to go, kind of logistically get things set up. Not the case. He was just told, Hey, you guys are going down to South Jersey. Uh, I don't suggest you get your own office. I suggest you go to, to the nationals office. So Ken, um, so that was kind of an easy decision because who wouldn't want to work out of the nationals office to kind of learn everything. So that was easy. Um, we had to find an apartment. We had to pay for the apartment. There was nothing done for us. Um, and this was over the course of like a month. So we weren't given too much time uh, to prepare. And the other thing that comes into play is financially, like we're not making too much money anyway. So it's hard to put down a deposit on an apartment when you make six, seven, eight hundred dollars a week. Yeah. Um, but we we got it done. Obviously, struggled, but we we got it done. We got our apartment. We move in on a Saturday, um, Sunday, just getting situated, and then Monday we were to go to to our nationals office. Um, whew, I remember this day again like it was yesterday because this day sucked. Um. As soon as we get into the office, um, the admin, she's like, hey, Mike, what, what's going on? Uh-oh, this isn't good. So I'm like, yeah, we're here uh, from, from Central Jersey. She's like, yeah, I, I know what office you're from. What, what's going on down here? I was like, oh, we're going to start the, the power campaign down here. She's like, okay, you guys are here for a road trip. And then she just went back to what she was doing. So we found a little spot. Uh, we started... Kind of just there were probably 60, 70 people in the office at that time. So we went into Atmo or atmosphere as we call it. Um, just to kind of introduce ourselves. And everyone's like, oh, you guys are the road trip from Central Jersey, all that. Um, so I get to a point where I'm like, all right, I'm tired of hearing we're a road trip from Central Jersey. I gotta go talk to to our national. So I get in there. He's like, What's up, Mike? What's going on? What are you doing here? Oh crap. So now I tell him, I'm like, hey. Uh, we're here to start the power campaign in South Jersey. He goes, well, that's not going to happen because there is no power campaign. I hate power. I'm like, oh God, I, I got to sit down for this one. So he's like, who sent you? I'm like, well, my owner. He And then he tells me, he's like, honestly, I haven't talked to your owner in probably over a year. He has nothing to do with the growth of the organization. And to, to his credit, I understood that because I never heard them talk. My my owner was always like, yeah, he he does what he wants to do. He was on his own kind of island, as they called it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, what's the plan? Like, what are we doing? He's like, well, what'd you guys do? Like, did you get an apartment or something? I'm like, yeah, we signed a one-year lease. He's like, oh, crap. Okay. So we figured it out. Like we started doing, um, we started doing power. He's like, I'll let you guys write leads. Cause you have to make money somehow. And then he's like, I do suggest everybody switches to Verizon. I'm like, well, Ken, I hate to tell you. And then before I said it, he's like, Ooh, but you're X filed from Verizon. Aren't you? I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, we'll figure it out. And to his credit, we, like I said, we started doing power. We were writing leads for them. We were making money. So things were okay but it was nowhere near what we were told it was going to be. Like I was told I was going to build and run the office out of there and be an owner, as they say. Yeah. But we ended up getting swallowed up in that office because I'm sorry, there's 70 people in that office. If there's two or three interviews a day, the chances of getting one are, are very slim. And especially when you're the newbies down there and you're, yeah. you're running a client or, or a program that, the national isn't focused on. He was all about Verizon yeah. because I understood that. Um, but yeah, at that point, power was like a, a dying campaign. Um, it was, there were only two or three offices on the campaign at that point, my old owner being one of them. Um, he just, my old owner just had no idea what was going on because 
like I said, he was on his own little island, as they called it. So mm-hmm. had to explain that to the the two girls that I went down there with, what the situation was. We got on the same page and had to spin that one somehow. Um, so yeah, here I am building, uh, or trying to rebuild again. This is oh. like your third rebuild. At yeah, this point. and the I, I figured out the reason. The reason was to get me out of that office in Central Jersey and to let Adam uh, run the show. Or, uh, I don't want to say his name, but whatever his name's Adam. Um, to let him run the show in Central Jersey because mm-hmm. that's what, uh, at least this is my opinion. I'm pretty sure it's true because I know my old manager. Um, yeah, he wanted him to run the show because me and him, I'm not the kind of person where if something's wrong, I'm not going to say it. So me and my old manager, we would butt heads all the time as people in any business should, because some people have different ideas, let them be heard. Yeah. Um, but Adam was, was all about it. He was like, Hey, like, I I agree with everything you do. He would kiss your shoes, all that kind of stuff, like Mm -hmm. do whatever you want. So I think that was just a little ploy to get me out of that office and have him run that one up there. Um, Hmm. would have been nice if he said that, but not made us get an apartment, Yeah. but yeah, there there is so much in there that is just shady as all get just, out, man. It's I, not I, it's just being it's just not being a good person. Like don't don't force people to buy to get in a legal contract to buy an apartment. Like just fire me. Mm-hmm. But they can't do that because then I'd collect unemployment. Like yeah. just like I, I I honestly there were so many times like I would have fired me when I got kicked off Verizon. Like I would have fired me right then if if there were issues. Like just do that. Like, but no, you can't because I don't know. You got to retain as many people as you can, I guess. Regardless. Yeah. So this is about four years in for you, uh, third rebuild. Um, what is the the money situation like, and what is the mental situation like at this point? Yeah. So. I don't even know where I was mentally at that point. I mean, I, 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 like I said before, I, I'm the kind of person where it's like, you give me a goal and I'm just going to put my head down and try to get to it. So mentally I was probably just the same. Um, money situation sucked. Um, I, I probably have other words for it, but it sucked. So, um, yeah, we were paying rent. We were paying like, like, obviously when you live on your own, you pay all the bills and all that, but yeah. it's, oh, so I forgot. So probably. Uh, when did she leave? Probably four, four weeks in one of the girls got homesick and she left. She literally just packed her stuff up and left, quit all that stuff. Um, it didn't go well, like between me and her, like, like not good ending there, um, which sucked because she, she's a great person, but I understood where she was coming from. Like, uh, the reason that she quit honestly is because my old owner, whatever leads we wrote, Sorry, I'm going all loops here, but whatever leads we were writing for power were under my own, my old owner. Mm -hmm. So he was getting the money from us, but we were in a completely different territory. So every Sunday or every Saturday, probably after the field, I would drive up to my old office, pick up our paychecks. Now, paychecks being right and wrong is a, a complete different story we can talk about. Yeah. Um. But this goes again to the owners putting the hard conversations, not on themselves, but on other people. So I remember I got the first paychecks and I had access to our computer system that would tell us what leads went through and how much money she, we should be getting paid. I don't think he knew that. Um, the paychecks were never right, um, which is a pretty standard thing in the, in, in smart circle. So I bring the paychecks down. I open mine, the girls open theirs and they both freak out because we just moved into a new apartment. We have no money anymore because we just paid to for furniture, all that stuff. The paychecks were literally like, we were all expecting over a thousand dollars because that's what the, uh, the system was telling me. And I showed them the paychecks were like 360 bucks or 400 bucks, something like that. So we were screwed at that point. Um, I told our national he logged into the the system that we were using for power and he's like yeah that's messed up um we were a little bit taken care of but 
the the trust at that point was gone. So every every Sunday, every Saturday, I was driving up there to get the paychecks, and they were never wrong. They were getting, I'm sorry, they were never right. I felt like they were getting smaller and smaller every week we went on because my owner wanted us further and further away, it seemed like. So she left. Um, so then it was me, just me and the other girl. So now we have three people paying the rent. We go down to two. Um, so things got a lot tighter. Um, at that point, probably a couple months later, the other girl that, that was in the, in the apartment with me, she ends up switching to Verizon Fios because that office was established on Verizon. I would have made the same choice if I could. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't because I was X-Filed. Um, and then she ends up going on an uh, expansion to Chicago a couple months after that. So now it's just me in the apartment. So I have all the rent to pay for. Uh, everything's in my name, obviously. Um, so I remember, I remember one day being in a, uh, a part, uh, being in a parking lot of a Burger King, looking at my uh, bank account with $5 in it, figuring out if I could either get gas or if I should get food from Burger King. Um, I think I chose gas. I don't remember, but that's the position that it, it puts you in. Um, and mentality wise, you feel like I can't talk to anybody because they're just going to say you're negging out, figure it out. So I didn't tell anybody my situation because I didn't want to burden anybody else. And I knew what the conversation would be. So um, had to figure it out. Um, and at that point, we were doing uh, Vivint, the, the home security system, like the smart home stuff. And for anyone, if you've ever uh, started a new campaign or launched a new campaign, you're not getting paid right away. Uh, it might take a couple of weeks for you to get paid if you even make a sale because it's trial and error at that point. So Vivint was, I think I signed up two people for that in like four months. It was, it was very tough. I love, I love their company. I love what they were offering, but it was hard telling, it was, it was a hard conversation, kind of the ADT guy that came to your door. That was your door, you said, correct? Yeah. Yeah, like it's a hard conversation talking to people about home security because you're going to get into pretty pretty tough convos. Like, hey, what do you do to protect your house? The hell are yeah. you worried about what I do to protect my house? <laughs> my house right now? So yeah, that was a tricky one. Um, but yeah, I, I made like probably, probably $2,000 over the course of four months. Wow. So uh, yeah, had to ask people for money and- not not fun, but if you want to be an entrepreneur, you got to struggle, right? At least that's what they say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, a lot of entrepreneurs, though, aren't essentially forced off the boat yeah. <laughs> to, to, to kind of do stuff they don't want to do. Yeah, very uh, true. If, if they're the entrepreneur, they should have control over they everything. To, yeah, I agree. Yeah, like if I was able to stay on power, um, I would have had no problem. I, I could, I could probably go out on power right now and make, make 500 bucks in a couple hours. Cause mm -hmm. I, I, that's just what I know. So, but they did, they didn't let me, they were like, Hey, this is the new, this is going to be huge. If you, if you're the one that, that kicks it off, you'll be a millionaire. Cause everything will be under you, all that stuff. And I guess that stuff works. So you said, it and I was actually going to ask you this, but I saw you wrote this. Um, I don't know why I didn't quit at this time. Yeah. Um, which I know why, because it's all rhetorical garbage that they, they drill into you. You know, the, that ownership, that fourth tier that you've talked about a couple of times, you know, why would I give up on $150,000 a year? I've been in this already four years by this time. Sunk cost fallacy kicks in. Yeah, if 100%. I quit now, then I've lost everything. The last four years has been a waste of time. And I get stuck with a $40,000 a year job when I could be owning my own business, making 150K, even yep. though I'm making less than minimum wage right now and can't even afford <laughs> my apartment. But- um, Can't afford Burger King. Yeah, couldn't even afford Burger King. Forget an apartment. <laughs> but you were kind of thrown a lifeline. Um, it's according to you, uh, the next year you were uh, kind of told, well- why don't we why don't we bring you back to Central Jersey? So how did I that was, whole conversation go? I was thrown a lifeline by the person who kicked me off the boat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he kicked you. So it's almost like somebody forced you off the boat, let you swim around the boat for an entire year, and then are yeah. like, here you go. Come on come back. back. <laughs> Please come back. Um 
Yeah. So even before that, like to go along, like the things like I credit where credit's due, they're very good at, at creating a vision, creating a picture for people. So when the conversation, like when Vivint was launched, it was me and like two other guys doing the campaign and conversation was simple. Hey, if you guys figure this out and you get it off the ground, it's your campaign. You can run it. And we've all heard stories like for people who are still in the business right now or people who were in it. We've heard stories where like some of these nationals, they're like, yeah, you know, no one else gave this program a shot, but I'm the one who built it. That's why I'm a national now. Um, so the wheels start turning in my head where I'm like, we can do this. So again, that that bought me another like couple months where mentality, I was still ready to go. I was still in. Um, and then, yeah, like, like you said, my, my old manager reached out to me randomly out of the blue. I don't think I even talked to him or texted him about a year before this happened. And all he said, he's like, hey, you ever think of coming back to Central Jersey? And I was like, hell yeah, because I can't I can barely afford South Jersey right now. So what's the deal? Uh, and I, I knew what his deal was going to be. I knew he probably had three or four people in his office. He didn't want to go back to the field and rebuild his office. So that's what my job was. Um, I agreed mostly because, again, if if I was the one who could rebuild the office, it should have been a fast track for me to get my own. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's what I told myself. But yeah, so I ended up going back to the office that I was kicked out of, kick, kicked out of quotes. Um, and when I got there, there were there were literally like three, three, four guys in the office. And like, when I tell you there were three or four of the guys that just should not be doing sales or talking to other people, it was these three or four guys. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? So I end up having to retrain them. I think two of them fell off probably because I told them to, like, I'm not allowed to fire people, but I can say behind my manager's back, Hey man, this isn't for you. Like, don't do this anymore. Like, just do something else. Like I had no problem doing that because I don't want to waste other people's time. Um, I guess I can do that, but they can't. Um, so yeah, I end up rebuilding that office. Um, and that probably got us to COVID. I, I'm thinking, yeah, that was probably 2019. Yeah. 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 I'm thinking that was early 2019 that I came back and then throughout the summer, just rebuilding the office, getting a bunch of good people in there. And then, um, Oh yeah, COVID was the uh, fourth, re the fourth uh, challenge for yeah. me. And then March, I think it was March seventeenth, we got the call from from Ken where he's like, "Hey, shutting down everything, no more door to door, all that stuff," which completely reasonable. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so now I'm like, oh crap, here we go again. I got twenty people on the team, or 15, 20 people on the team. What What do I got to do now? Mm -hmm. um the next day we all come into the office um and adt is magically one of our clients <laughs> um really weird how that happened so there's no way we're going to the field right no 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 we have this this little letter that the owners print out uh supposedly to give to the police when we are going to get stopped because there's a, a pandemic going on um, that didn't work. A couple of the guys went to the field. I didn't want to go to the field for, uh, cause some of the people I live with are older, so I'm not going to risk it. Um, within literally within an hour of the guys going to the field, they're back at the office, uh, saying there's like, they got kicked out by the cops, which is a, a pretty common occurrence doing door to door. Cause yeah. why the hell would we get permits? Um, but this one, they were, they were like, they were yelled at pretty bad. Um, so that was the end of that. I think we had ADT as our client for like a day. Um, so yeah, I go from, I mean, we let go, I think, I don't know, they were taking care of us with the unemployment boost. That was nice. So a lot of the guys were making more money just on unemployment than in the field. Yeah. So there was no shot they were coming back. Um, so I think we came back uh, probably July of 2020. I think it was late July of 2020 came back. And throughout COVID, we were coming into the office three times a week to do recruiting um, and training. So we were hiring people throughout COVID um, and we were training them just like the basics, like the, the 
the I don't know the four steps to the or five steps to the conversation and all, all the basic smart circle stuff, uh, just in preparation for when we were coming back. Yeah. I mean, everybody thought it was going to be like a two week break, but it ended up being a couple months, obviously. Um, so we would hire people and then we like, hey, we'll call you when we're allowed to work again, never see them again. So we come back and we have like four, four or five guys in the office and here we go starting over again. And I think that point uh, we stopped doing power. We started doing the Inspire campaign. Um, Inspire is actually pretty cool. It's clean energy. So um, nothing wrong with clean energy. Um, so we started that campaign. So now got to learn a new campaign. and. The part that sucked, I remember, it was me and one of my guys. Uh, his name's Ben. It was literally just me and him at that point. Mm -hmm. Credit to him. I mean, he was he's a he was young at that point. Probably I don't know how old he is now, but I think it was his first job out of college, and he had the right mentality for it. He was like, "Let's figure this out. Let's do this." So that kept me going because I don't I don't want to like quit on him. That whole thing. Um, so we are struggling. Like my owner is giving a shit for this. He's like. Why can't you guys do this? Like there's offices that are crushing it on this. He never went to the field to help us out. We're just figuring this shit out. I'm sorry. We're just figuring this stuff out on our own. Um, and then we get to back to the office every day. Why'd you guys do zero pitch pace attitude? It's not the T it's the bum in the T all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah. you don't even know the pitch. You don't even know what inspire does. Um, so that was another financial struggle there and mentally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we ended up figuring it out. Um, I actually forced a road trip. So me, uh, my guy, Ben, and another guy, Mike, we ended up going to uh, our office down in Baltimore. Um, one of the top owners on the campaign there. Um, I didn't tell my manager we were going. <laughs> I was like, hey, um, we're going to be out for a couple of days. He's like, hey, this is on the way to Baltimore. He's like, where are you guys? I'm like, I took the guys to Baltimore. We got to learn Inspire. He freaked out, obviously, but didn't really care because you got to figure it out somehow. Mm -hmm. um, first conversation I have with the manager down in uh, in Baltimore is the same conversation I had with Ken when I got to his office. He's like, yeah, I don't know what your owner's thinking. Um, we really don't talk to him much. He has no idea what's going on in the organization. So I'm glad you're here. I'm like, what what the hell is going on? Um so we we learned what we had to learn. Um, and then when we came back, my manager was obviously pretty upset with us. But I was like, hey, we're either going to make money for you or we're not going to make money for you. Which one would you rather have? He's like, all right, good point. But uh, let me know next time. And I'm like, well, let me know next time you want to kick me out of the office and force me to go to South Jersey. Uh -huh. um, good yeah. point. <laughs> That's just how it is. Um so yeah, we we got it off the ground. I mean, Inspire was pretty good. And then, yeah, I would say it's probably early 2021. Uh, my manager is, uh, oh, this is the first uh, inkling I got that he was, he was on his way out. Mm -hmm. He started having us work every other Saturday, not every Saturday. Now, obviously I was cool with that because who the hell wants to work every Saturday? But for me, I saw that as, okay, he is going way against any, like no one's going to approve. Like he's not going to go to Ken and be like, hey, Ken, I'm giving the guys off every other Saturday. Ken would light him up for that. There's no shot he even told Ken. Um, I remember having a conversation with, with Ken. He's like, what's up with the, like, why aren't you guys doing leads on Saturdays? I'm like, oh, well, we work every other Saturday. He's like, what the, the hell? Like, no, you, you can't work every, sat every other Saturday. It's every Saturday. Um, of course that was my fault, not, not my owner's fault. That's my fault. Um, so I saw that I was like, all right, this is great. Cause all the guys are excited for every other Saturday, but I knew I was like, all right, that's not normal. He's definitely doing something to ruffle some feathers there. Um, over the next couple of weeks, like he started not, he started not coming in. He started missing days. Like I could just tell he, he wasn't going to last much longer. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, I was like, this is good because then I'll be able to take over that office. Um, there was one day that pushed him over the edge, not one day, but one one person that interviewed. Um, I'm sure you're aware and everybody's aware the business has a weird way of attracting just the weirdest people. 
So winter of 2021, this kid comes in for an interview. Um, definitely a weird, weird guy. Um, definitely unique, interesting. Um, all the red flags in the world to not hire the guy. But guess what? He's coming back for a second round interview because why the hell not? So this is going to sound crazy. It's going to sound like I made this up. There was probably a foot of snow on the ground. Uh, and our office had just a bunch of windows looking out to the parking lot. So one thing we always like to do is keep an eye on the parking lot, see who's coming in. So we could be like, all right, I got to get this person for a second round interview. Like that person looks great. Like get excited for that, for, for these people. So we watched the kid leave. Um, he literally pees outside of his car. Like just opens the door and pees outside of his car. And we see it. We see it in the snow. We're like, what the, is this kid taking a leak outside? And we're on the second floor of an office. Underneath us is a, is a doctor's office that does like rehab and all that. So there's probably 15, 20 people probably watching this guy. Um, now, my manager didn't see that one, but the kid comes back the next day. He does the same thing in the same spot before he comes up for the interview. So we see this again, and then we go into the office and I'm like, dude, you gotta check. This kid's literally taking a leak outside. Like, what's up? He's like, what the hell? So he turns around, looks outside the window, Kid's still taking a leak outside of his car. So he kid comes up and my manager, I, I mean, thank God he did this. I thought he was going to have one of us interview him. Um, well, he did hire him. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. So never mind. He hires the kid. Oh but, my God. Oh no, I'm trying to think because we end up hiring him. So I think it was the, one of the girls in the office ends up interviewing him. Give, probably gives him a ter terrible recommendation, like don't hire the guy. But at the time, there were four of us in the office. So we'll hire whoever we can to build up the office. So actually, yeah, that's where I was wrong. So he he took a second leak uh, the day, his first day. So I go into, into his office. I'm like, dude, this kid's taking a leak out of, outside of his car again. Like, we can't work with this guy. Like, this is crazy. So he doesn't, he ends up letting him go his first day to work here um as he should but that that's that's what pushed him over the edge he was like dude i can't i can't work with these people like i'm like well why'd you hire the kid in the first place like that was your mistake he's like dude the people it's just everything covid all this this and that he's like i'm gonna take the money that i saved and uh i'm out so i'm like all right do what you got to do and like credit to him i i know he was because uh, I'm sure if people have seen the other videos, you don't really get the money that is in your bank account. You're, yeah. It's not yours at the end of the day because they give you, uh, what is it, power of attorney that Smart Circle gets. Mm -hmm. um, I, I should know that because I signed all that paperwork when you sign it to be an owner. Um, but uh, that's another, we can talk about that too. Um, yeah, he was done. So I think he he actually saved, he took a lot of money out. Um, I know he said, I think he left with probably 50 or 60 grand in his, uh, in his personal account. Cause he was smart. Like, uh, um, I saw, how did he do it? I think he was slowly taking money out probably for about two years before he quit. Cause I mean, he, I know he made pretty good money when he first started. Um, so there was money to be made there. And I guess he, he kind of saw the writing on the wall. He knew how it worked. So he did what he had to do. He took care of himself a little bit, but um, he literally left us high and dry. Like, I think he quit on a Tuesday. He pulled me into his office. Of course, he tells me, not the other four people in the office, and he leaves. He's like, hey, take the guys to the field. As soon as you leave, let me know so I can come back and clean out the office. So I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. As I'm driving to the field, I'm like, wait a second, what the hell are we going to do? like if we have no office to come back to. So I tell the guys what's going on and they're like, well, what are we going to do? Um, that's probably the next, I remember I was outside of a Wawa. Um, that's when I should have really quit. <laughs> Cause like if my manager quits, one of the guys that I, I looked up to, if he quits, I should be like, all right, I'm done too. But no, me being stupid, me, I end up calling um, the manager in Baltimore 
and he gets me in touch with a manager that's coming up to our territory to open up a new office. So I'm like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, we were planning to, to basically kick it, uh, kick your owner out of the territory. I was like, the hell? You can just put another owner in another territory? He's like, well, got to do what you got to do. So I end up talking to uh, my soon-to-be new manager, uh, and we figure it out. He's like, look, I'm coming up to there. We're opening up an office in two weeks. So you guys are more than welcome to, to work out of that office. So I was like, all right, cool, no problem. I end up, like, we still got to make money. So for a week, I end up meeting the guys at a Wawa, and we're running the office out of my car for a week. Um, actually, it was a pretty good week, not going to lie, because you don't have to deal with all the office BS, all that yeah. drama. You could just go to the field. Um, so that was a pretty good week, but yeah, we ended up starting uh, at a new office. Now it sounds like you're, you're once again headed in the right direction, right? It seems like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the new manager, um, his name was Glenn. I'll say his name because I really don't have anything bad to say about him. Good guy. Um, he was great. Like he took care of us. He was like, Hey, I heard you kicked, got kicked out of your home. You have a new home now. So I was like, all right, this guy sounds cool. He was, he is, he's probably one of the best people I met in the business, not going to lie. Um, so we open up or he opens up a new office, literally five minutes from where I'm living. I'm like, all right, this is pretty cool. Like right down the street. This is great. Um, now they open up the office with him and another manager coming up on the Verizon campaign. And it was really cool because um, they were from two different sides of Smart Circle. So I think you came out with your first video probably five years ago, right? Yes, 2018. So um, I know you're going to love to hear this. Uh, it definitely made some impact uh, in, in uh, Ken's office at that point. Um, I, I, don't, I don't even think uh, the, the Verizon owner knew what Hey Guys, Hey What was. He didn't know what juice was, but uh, my new manager, he was all about that because um, he was more from the old school side. Um, but I remember, I mean, don't take this the wrong way, but I remember when I first saw that video, I was like, man, I hate this guy. Like he's trying to talk bad about my company. Like, screw this. I watched, <laughs> I know you've heard that before. I forget what interview it was, but he's like, man, I hated you, but now I, I see. It. <laughs> um, but I watched all the videos just to learn what I was going to be kind of up against. Now I'm like, obviously I'm doing one now for that reason. But when we were in Ken's office down in South Jersey, uh, they put an end to all the chants, all the culty stuff that was in, uh, in atmosphere. Um, no more. Hey guys. Hey, what? No more. Uh, like, I mean, they still did crazy team nights and all that stuff, but a, a lot of things changed. Uh, we, we talked about sales a lot more. We talked about commission. Um, in my eyes, things were going kind of a good way. Because to be honest, like who the hell wants to get in a big circle at the end of the day, clapping and having people ring a bell? Like that's, that's culty. Um, yep. So we, we weren't doing that anymore. But the reason I'm saying that is my new manager was still in that mindset because there were parts of our organization that were on their own little kind of old school islands mm -hmm. that my old manager was part of. But then the new guy had never heard that stuff before. So seeing them two kind of figure out what the hell's going on was a very interesting time. Um, they never really got along too well. They always butted heads with things as is kind of natural because one guy's I think in his forties, the other guy is like early twenties. Mm -hmm. So naturally they're going to see things a little bit differently and they're going to run their businesses a little bit differently, which is completely normal, completely fine. Um, I somehow found myself in the middle, which I always seem to find myself. Um, so that was weird. Um, I'm working really well with, with, with Glenn. Like I said, me and him see things pretty alike. Um, similar stories too. I know he had a similar damn it, this is another one of those things that just kept me in. So he's like, yeah, I know exactly what you're going through. I went through the same stuff. I'm like, damn it, crap. Like, all right, let's talk. So we end up, we were pretty good partnership there. So we end up rebuilding or building his team. Like he came down with a pretty good solid team. Um, and credit to them, like they actually taught 
uh, they taught myself and my guys the right way to do the Inspire campaign. So things were going well. We were making more money than we made previously. So all good. Um, he always wanted to go to Philly. He always wanted an office in Philadelphia because he's from Philadelphia. I would do the same thing. I always wanted an office in Central Jersey because I'm from Central Jersey. So later in the year, um, the office opens up in, in Philadelphia. So I start, he starts preparing me to run the office in Central Jersey. We get, I think I have three incorporation binders at this point. I get another one to add to my collection. Um, so we set up my incorporation again. So I, I get a bank account. I sign all the papers that no one reads. Um, I get my little binder, all that stuff. So I'm juiced out of my mind, as they say. Um, so I'm excited. But that wasn't the plan. So I remember he, he ends up getting his crew out of the Central Jersey office. They go open up um, Philadelphia. And this was, this was pretty, pretty quick. This was like over the course of a couple of days. So wow. in my head, I'm like, cool, like no offense to Glenn, but I'm like, cool, get out of my territory. I'm going to run this one now. Um, no harm, no foul. But that's not the plan. So we get on a conference call with Ken. As soon as the screen comes on, it's Ken, us in the little conference room, and the other Verizon owner. As soon as I saw the other Verizon owner, I was like, holy shit, I know exactly what's going to happen. He's going to have us, me and my crew, work under him, and he's going to have Verizon and Inspire. I've seen this before. Here I go. I'm screwed again. That is exactly what happens. And I, I am very good at maintaining, uh, maintaining my attitude, I guess, and maintaining a cool, calm, collected demeanor. So the whole time I see this going on on the screen, my guys and girls are looking at me like, what the hell is going on? Like, we thought you were going to run the territory and he was going to run Verizon. Like, they are pissed. Like, and I'm just sitting there just like, okay, yeah, this is great. Like just cool, calm, collected. Cause I don't know what else to do. Um, so yeah, now I got to switch to another owner. So that, that was the fourth and last time I gave that one probably, probably two, three months. Um, and then finally, uh, one of, one of the other guys, uh, Amir, if you see this, thank you for, uh, convincing me to quit. Cause probably still be in the business if it wasn't for him. Um, yeah, he's like, dude, I'm quitting because this just job isn't right for him. And it, it clearly wasn't because this job isn't right for a lot of people, but it says it is. Um, he ends up quitting. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to quit too. So I go into the office. I tell the manager, I'm like, hey, look, I'm done. I got nothing left. I can't do this anymore. Um, he's like, I, I can't say anything to you. Like, you're going to quit regardless. I'm like, yeah, there's nothing you could say right now. So I ended up quitting, uh, me and Amir, we go to probably, I think we went to IHOP, probably the best breakfast I've ever had. Cause I, I was free now. Um, a week later, best, best part of the story. A week later, we go to pick up our paychecks that were wrong again. Um, he's packing up his stuff. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, yeah, no, I, I I'm quitting too. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I just, I, I, I don't feel like rebuilding Verizon Inspire. I have no idea what Inspire even is. So uh, I'm done. I'm like, wow, okay, cool. Like, can I have my paycheck? And then that was it. So I remember uh, the couple weeks, um, the couple months after that were pretty dark. Um, Cause you're, I mean, I was doing something for, for nine years. So yeah. pretty tough, but being into the uh, the real world, getting quote unquote normal job, which is frowned upon in smart circle, it's crazy what uh what I was missing out on. So I could talk yeah. mentality stuff if you want to talk about that too, because absolutely a completely uh, different yeah. animal there. Yeah, and and that was one of one of the things I wanted to ask you about was after doing anything for one year and yeah. anything as 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 grueling and as horrifying as a smart circle for one year times that by nine and not just nine years, but essentially having your future yeah. played with and repackaged over and over and over again. Like you, you, you were basically set up to be an owner four different times. Yeah. And it still never technically made it right. 
all those times. I was, the closest one I got to was the one with Glenn, um, where I actually set up my bank account and he put some money in there to get me going. I was probably a week away, like no joke. Yeah. Um, but looking back on it, thank God. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, I was watching all the videos. The the video you did with Dan, um, I, he was an owner. I I, yeah. I I don't. It's weird. Like a lot of the names he was saying um, were people that I could have just named in my story there. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, who is this guy? Like, but there's so many people in the business. But yeah, I was watching his. Uh, I think his came late 2021. That was really the one that for me, I was like, all right, that's what I needed to hear to really, really kind of not want to be an owner anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, what was, what was your question? That so I, like, we, like we were talking about um, mentality because yeah. your, your first words, like you said, when you went to IHOP that day, I, I felt free or I was free. And I, it's, it's gr- amazing that you say <laughs> that because I remember the day, um, that I got off the phone with my, with my owner when I quit um, because he kind of gave me an out. He, he wanted to meet to give me the bottom line conversation, but he yeah. gave me an out. He said, well, maybe this just isn't for you. And at that point I put 15 months in, but yeah. I was miserable. I was yep. miserable. So I told him, yeah, it's not. And we, we ended amicably, you know, no bad blood between us. Uh, we Lucky hung you. up the phone and I sat there in my in my home office at the time thinking, you know, I'm unemployed technically as of this moment, but damn, I feel good. I don't have to go to Jewel Osco to sell shit anymore. I don't have to deal with people that don't want to deal with me. I don't have to deal with never seeing anybody again apart from work people. Yeah. So I felt it's, the exact same way. It's a terrible good feeling. Yeah. Like, yes, I was unemployed, but I did not care at all. I was like, I, I know, I, I know I'm capable of more. I know, and that credit, I guess a little credit to the business. I learned a lot of good things that I know yeah. are transferable skills and they've been like yeah. the company I'm working with right now is a good, good uh, instance of that. But yeah, I remember sitting in my car with, with a mirror next to me and we were just like, he's like, what do you want to do? I was like, let's go get some food, man. Like, we don't got to go to the field. We don't work now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like just, I don't, I don't know if anyone could ever be more excited about quitting a job or not working at or being unemployed than, than we were or people that, that leave. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, uh, I mean, it was probably, it probably took me, oh yeah, it took me like three months to find a new job. Mm -hmm. Like not long at all. Like, uh, unfortunately it takes people a lot longer, but yeah. Um, I learned how to sell it. I learned how to sell nine years at one company because instead of putting five different, I don't know how many different name companies I technically worked for with all stupid names that mean nothing. Um, I just put smart circle for nine years. So it says on my, my resume that I was with a company for nine years. Like that, that looks good. The manager who hired me for the company I'm with now, he's like, yeah, we saw you were with a company for nine years. That means a lot. I was like, well, sweet. Awesome. Don't don't look into that company, but yeah, <laughs> don't read the reviews. You you cannot contact for references. But thank you for seeing it that way. I don't think, I think I that's used, yeah. I didn't use anybody here for my reference. Wait, no, yeah. I did use my old boss because yeah, like the original one, that one that threw yeah. me under the bus. I did use him because we have we had a good relationship. But yeah, I knew he would say good things. But that's the thing is like, and I'm I'm really glad that worked out for you because thanks. For nine, you put in so much and went through so much in nine years that you deserve to be running any of those companies. So yeah. the fact that that framing that experience as nine years with a single company, which let's face it, you are because those little marketing companies, they're just yeah. smart circle subsidiaries. They're yep. not yep. they're not individually owned businesses. Um that's what it was. And and I'm glad that you were you were recognized for that because. Um, cause you were a smart circle employee. That's oh, yeah. all you were. Yeah. hundred percent. And it's funny you say that. Cause like one of the reasons I know you asked, um, I don't even know if you, if her name was said, um, I don't think it was cause her, her face was blurred out on the video too, but, um, the video you did a couple of months ago, there was like the truth of, of owners for smart circle. Yes. Yeah, yes. That was a great interview. And one of the things that she said in the beginning was she was doing this 
to kind of spread 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 the uh, the info for people in the business or, mm-hmm. or getting recruited, but also for her for her own well being. And it's the same thing for me. Like I've never told anybody these stories, not even my parents. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, this is <laughs> mentality wise for me. It's like uh, I don't know. They tell you not to bottle things up, yeah. but well, Smart Circle makes you bottle them up. So this is honestly the first time that I'm actually talking about these things so i do thank you for that um but it's definitely not easy like no because you bring everything back and it's like damn what the hell was i thinking you're you're bringing you're bringing everything back memories that you really don't want to remember um in a public arena so you're making yourself very very vulnerable to criticism um all good yeah so yeah and and so thank you for wanting to do that um so, but the mentality thing, um, I, I feel like I keep bringing it up and we somehow yeah. get distracted with it. And that's all probably day, my fault. Um, how did you recover from that? So after the breakfast, after that excellent breakfast, and after you said you went and got your last paycheck and that owner was also <laughs> out of there. Um, so how do you come to terms with that? Obviously, yes, you're you're applying for jobs and you frame it as nine years with a single company. But mentally now your life's completely different. Like you said, you're back in the real world. You're yeah. no longer in the insulated, false, smart circle, devil corp universe. Yeah. So what, what happens there? How do you come back from that? Um, well, the only way I know how is to jump into something else. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I would say those three months that I wasn't un, un, uh, unemployed were pretty bad, pretty dark. Like, not going to lie. There were nights where I didn't get any sleep. I've had trouble sleeping since honestly, since I left, Mm because it it, it goes back to like the sunken cost fallacy or something like you get so excited for a goal Mm -hmm. and then you never reach it like that. That messes you up a little bit. Um, But I mean, luckily I've, I've found a new company. I've had, well, the the company that hired me, I, I was there for like eight months. Um, ended up getting let go, which was, was good. Like it was a mutual kind of thing. So that's good, but I'm with a new company now. So the only way I really know how to deal with that is to, to work. Um, but I can't look at it. I can't just dwell on the, uh, the bad times. Like I can't look at it as like, I, I wasted nine years of my life because that would really, that would be bad. That would be bad. So I, I have to look at all the, all the good things that I learned, like the leadership stuff, the, the coaching and training and that's kind of what I'm doing in my new role. Like I'm in a sales role because I do enjoy the sales side of things. I I had fun. I I learned a lot. So why put that to waste? Sure. But I I am kind of taking more of a leadership role with the guys and girls that I work with. Um, And I do credit that to smart circle, but it's because I have to, it's because if I, if I was looking at it as all a negative, that would, that would wreck me and me knowing me, like I can go down some pretty dark places. Like, uh, I, I think a lot of people have struggled with depression, so I know mm-hmm. what I can and cannot think about. So mm-hmm. um, I have to be careful with that, but I have to stay busy. Um, yeah. But I have to learn to look at the positive things because there are some, but sure. it took me nine years to, I could have learned that in one year instead of nine. That, that's yeah. the only regret I have. Like it, it cost me nine years. Like I, I will not get that time back. So the, it's funny you say that the first thing I did after uh, I quit is you want to, this is going to sound crazy. I took a vacation. You're, you're not the first person to tell me that. Like we're not allowed to take vacations in smart circle. You can't miss a day. Yeah. Like uh, that's another thing too, that I can talk about for, for years probably about is, is what it really costs. And again, the, I, the, the girl that you did the interview a couple of weeks, uh, months ago, she nailed it. The business will take what you're willing to give and it will let you, it will get you to give a lot. Mm-hmm. Like I gave up all my hobbies, all the things I was passionate about. I gave up some friendships, um, a lot of stuff. So I, I like to snowboard. So the last time I was snowboarding was early February of 2013. And I didn't go snowboarding until February of 2022. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still knew how, thank God, but like just if someone's thinking about or if they're still in the business like whatever whatever hobbies you have or passions you have you're not going to be doing those because you have no time to do them 
so like that was like I remember getting back up to uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Vermont but one of my favorite places to be uh, when we drove up there I was like that that helped me a lot mentally because it was literally the week after I quit yeah. I needed that like because it brought me back to what it what I was before smart circle yeah um started playing golf again I, I started all doing all the things that I used to love that I, I love again so yeah thank God for that but yeah, it'll take the, it'll take all that stuff away from you. Maybe not away from you, but it puts it on the back burner uh, and then tells you you can have it back when you get to ownership, but no shot. Yeah. So yeah, that, uh, I mean, it sucks, but can't change it. Sure. I mean, this year will be nine years out of Smart Circle for me. Um, and every once in a while, I'll still have uh dreams in the middle of the night that i gotta yeah. go to the field um or that i'm working with my one of my owners you know they just pop back in my dreams for some yeah. reason i don't you know i don't think that'll ever go away unfortunately yeah and it's a lot, lot less frequent a lot less frequent now yeah. but still yeah. happens yeah because yeah, you gotta replace those memories with new ones i guess right mm -hmm. yeah but it's funny you mentioned the field because I, I never, well, I did, I mean, just like everybody, when you first start, the field sucks, but I started loving the field because I wasn't in the office. That's mm -hmm. where I could be by myself. I could meet some, you meet some cool people in the field. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. you meet some, some shitty people. You have some tough times, like the cops getting called on you and being told you're doing illegal stuff. Um, but then when you get back to the office, it's like, oh, great. Here's all the drama. Here's all the bullshit. Yeah. So I, one of the guys, uh, one of the guys that I could probably get on one of these too. Um, every time we talk, he's like, man, the only thing I miss is the field. I'm like, I know what you mean. Cause we, we had some fun. Yeah. Like it, there's sometimes when you're, when you're training people, it, it's a little, it can suck a little bit, but when you're working with like someone who's at your same skill level in the field, you can have some pretty good, good times, yeah, easy days. Can. Like it, it is what it, well, did you ever do door to door? Thank God. No, I didn't. <laughs> I could not imagine. The the thing with door to door is because I did a, I did a retail uh, like event once for Verizon Fios. Mm -hmm. And that was like top five worst days ever because really? we were we were in a uh, in a mall. And it was one of the one of the best malls in New Jersey. And the town that the mall is in can't get Verizon Fios. It's not wired for it. So we were having literally like hundreds of people coming up to us like, oh, Verizon's in Freehold. Can we get Verizon? So we're like, sure. Like, let's plug in your address. Nope. Can't get it. I was like, can we just go to the field, knock on some doors and work where we know they can get what we're offering? Yeah. So like I, yeah, door to door, like there were days that, that sucked. Like the summer when it's 900 degrees. Oh, I guarantee because uh, in Jersey, we had uh, the smoke from uh, the fires in uh, Canada last week. Yeah. I don't know if you heard about that at all. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is no shot they they uh, they had off. The guys were definitely working in that. Oh, of course. And like, of course, you could barely. It looked like Mars outside my window, and you could barely breathe. Mm -hmm. But there's there they were definitely working. So that was probably a really crappy couple of days for them. But it is what mm -hmm. it is. But definitely had some good days in the field, and definitely had some fun. But I mean, looking back on it, I wish I didn't have to do it. But yeah learned some good things, met some cool people. So it is what it is. And it definitely makes you a different, it, I don't know, it gives you a thick skin, which you need in sales. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. Yeah. And really now that we're out, I think the, the, the framing and of what you do with that information, what you do with those, those, um, those core memories is so important because we could yeah. look back on it and say, wasted opportunities or i lost this much time or or we could say well i you know what did we gain from it what can we take away from it and yeah over time the negative effects will it's ebb like, away you know it's just like a relationship like if yeah. you you're in a relationship a long-term relationship looking back on if, if it ends up going going south like you look back at it you're like oh well i shouldn't have said that or maybe that person did this wrong or something like that so you learn from your mistakes and you go forward. So that's the only way I can look at it because if I, yeah, if I look at it like crap, I just cost myself nine years and it was <laughs> my mid twenties to early thirties. Not, not a good time to not have a life. That's the part that sucks, but 
can't change it. So we could talk about the ownership side because um, I have a a pretty good. I mean, my old owner did a pretty good job of explaining things to me when he left about how things work. So we could talk about yeah. that. Um, yeah, that's fine. I mean, because, uh, you know, like when I, my time in Smart Circle, you know, we we were always taught ownership. That's that's the level you want to get oh, yeah. to. Um, all your, like you've talked about, all your dreams will come true, whatever mm-hmm. your um whatever one of your whys is you'll if it's free time family whatever you'll get it um obviously in the past five years i've learned that that's all a lie and that most owners make less money than their team leaders tend to make Uh, but yeah being as being as close to ownership as you were you know what what light can you shed on on that idea of smart circle ownership so kind of like you just said it is is not the money they promise you um, I had access to, I guess, I guess the financial side of things, at least on the power home and modeling campaign with my old owner, my original owner, um, and the break even for our, for our office, like we, we had a pretty nice office in central Jersey and New Jersey is not cheap when it comes to real estate. Um, I think he was spending probably 30, no, he was spending like four grand a, a month on the rent. Um, wow. But when they break down the business to you, they tell you the overhead is the rent and the supplies in the office. Yes. They don't tell you about Herb Joy, which- No. Are are you familiar? (laughs) Yeah. They don't tell you that you have to pay all this money for recruiting. They don't tell you, uh, like, it all goes back to Smart Circle. Um, And that's a lot of money. So like, I remember I, I was the one who handed out the paychecks always because when they were wrong, guys would come into me and be like, Mike, where, where's the, where's the boss? Well, you're here. So what's up with my paycheck? Oh, cool. I'll take care of it. So I would see, I, I'm just a curious person, I guess. I would rummage through the little pay, payroll envelope. I would see how much everybody got paid. And then I'd see that my owner paid himself a hundred bucks every week. And I'm like, what a hundred bucks every week like what's up with that and then i i spoke to him about it he's like yeah no all my money is in my my business account i'm like well how do you take that out he's like uh yeah let's go get lunch i'm like what so every week he paid himself a hundred bucks and i mean people can do the math if we're bringing in if we're doing a certain amount of leads for whatever client we're doing. And I know the overhead is $4,000 a a month. And after we do all these leads, you're only making like $5,000 in profit. You can't afford anything. Like what's going on there. Um, And I, I learned to look for little clues. He bought himself a new car. It was a used like 2015 Nissan. I'm like, you're an owner. Why don't you go buy a Ferrari, whatever it is? Like it just, none of that stuff happens. They talk about it, but it doesn't happen because they don't really have the money. It's all, it's all just, it's all smoke and mirrors. I mean, when I got down to Ken's office, yeah, I saw some of the nice cars he had. Oh, that's what I like to bring up. So I saw some of the nice cars he had and some of the guys have nice cars. Like, yes, I know the guy who had the, the Maserati, but he was one out of how many people that get to that position. Um, so ownership, yeah. Like, and my owner told me, he's like, yeah, I took 60 grand out of the business and they gave him hell for it because it's not his money. It's Smart Circle's money. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? You ha-? I'm like, and that's why I said, I was like, what do you mean you had to like call your hub manager to see if you could take out 60,000 of your own dollars? He's like, well, that's just how it works. And then I was just like, okay, cool. I guess that's just how it works. I can't wait till I'm there. Yeah. Um, well, okay. Yeah. So another thing when I started kind of really connecting the red flags and all that. So you've heard the name Ken, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So he's a national and he does really well for himself. Um, at least that's what we were told. Um, I was told from day one that he makes between five to $10 million a year. So cool. Like who wouldn't want to make five to $10 million a year? Great. Um, probably late 2021, we're in, uh, we're on a little road trip up to the office in North Jersey. 
and we're running, they're running like the Friday conference call thing that they always do. And it's Larry interviewing Ken. And one of the questions he asks, he goes, Ken, he's like, Ken, when did you make your first million? And Ken said, he, I think he said like 2018 or 2019. And I'm like, what? You made your first million a couple years ago? I thought you were making like five to 10 million a year. I was like, wait a second, what, what the hell's going on here? Like he has like 70, 80 offices like in his organization. Now I'm really confused. But I, at that point I was pretty much done anyway. So I was like, all right, whatever. That's just more fuel to the fire. So I don't really care, but it just goes to show you, like it's a lot of it is just smoke and mirrors. It's over promotions, as they used to say. And my owner always told me, he's like, don't over promote the business. And then in my head, I'm like, well, why are you driving a, use 2016 Nissan. Nothing wrong with that. But if you say you can afford whatever, all these nice things, like, why aren't you driving a Mercedes? Yeah. And then they give you some weird excuse. They're like, oh, that wouldn't be the smart financial decision. I should save my money. I should keep it in the business. Yeah. It's like, there's always keep... an excuse, right? <laughs> yeah. There's always keep it an in the excuse. business because they won't let you take it out. Yeah. That's literally why they will yeah. not let you take out your own money. That's why you can't afford that uh, Maserati or the <laughs> Tesla or whatever. Uh, and yeah, and there's, there's so many, so many similar stories to that. Uh, I, the, the one that I always go back to is I did an interview with a, a Credico, uh, I don't remember what his title was mm -hmm. years ago, and he ended up in real estate. And I guess some of the Credico higher ups that he had good relationship with was looking for housing advice and oh, he, yeah, they he needed, his w right? yeah, the, the W2s reported like 50 K so these guys found out I was in real estate and, you know, I'm excited. I'm like, okay, I'll help you guys out. Well, once I saw those tax returns, I was like, bro, you only made 20000 last year. He's like, no, 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 that's, you know, that's just my personal one, which is my business taxes. I'm like, you only netted 20000 I thought you were this big bowler. I was like, no, no, it's this and that. I'm like, bro, I can't approve you for anything. Can you get a guarantor? And they were like, hey, I'll get one of the big managers. When I got the big manager's taxes. Some of them didn't even want to give up their taxes. I guess they were so embarrassed. And um, some of them was um, organizational consultants, the higher up. And when I saw them, like 50,000. Like, no wonder you guys live with all five, six people in one one house. Which 50K, that's a that's an okay salary. That's a decent salary. But if you're a consultant, 50K? Yeah, yeah really? I remember, uh, I'm not going to lie. I've, I pretty much know all your videos, like the back of my hand now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for reasons of needing to know what I was going to be up against in conversations with new stars. Sure. So yeah, I know exactly which one you're referencing there. Yeah. It's just so bizarre to me that, but I, I understand it because it's, they're taught from the very, very top, yeah, like you mentioned from Larry, yeah. right. From Ken, they're taught to, to aggrandize these things, mm -hmm. right. To say what could be, I know we've talked about that a couple of times, what could be, what might be. Yeah. That's not the normal. And That's they, one out of a thousand, one out of a million. And all you have to see is one little piece of that. Like when I got to Ken's office, I saw the cars he had. He had a Skyline, or a, he had a Nissan GTR. I'm a huge car guy, at least. Well, I was before Smart Circle. I haven't been able to get back into it because I have no money. But um, <laughs> like that got me excited. I was at Larry's house, both of his houses, which were beautiful like his house on the like is literally right on the beach he has one house and he brags about uh what is it he uh outbid nicholas cage for the house and then obviously the story about how he lived next to kobe bryant of course kobe um, bryant yeah yeah rest in peace yeah but like when you see these things it adds like uh whatever it I don't know what the word is drawing a blank, but you see credibility. It, it, it lends credibility. Yeah, exactly. You're like, aha, they're correct. Mm -hmm. And all you need is that one little thing and you hold, I'm at least very good at holding on to that one little thing. And like, well, if that guy can do it, why can't I? Mm -hmm. So I, that's why it was, <laughs> that's what, I guess that's what cost me nine years, but yeah, I'm sure a lot of people do the same thing. They see one little thing of success and they're like, aha, there it is. But they're blinded by the fact that they're blind by the other things that they don't see. Like uh, there's so many owners out there that are just flashes in the pan where, and, and I saw this in, in Ken's office too, 
where they would build someone up like, oh, this person, this guy or girl is going to be great. And then six months later, it's like, where are they? What happened? And then it's just nothing but negative things talked about them. Oh, they did this wrong. They're, they were terrible at this. It's like six months ago, they were the greatest thing since sliced bread, like all these huge things. And then like, where's the support? Like, why yeah. can't we help this person out? Like what happened? But it's not the business's yeah. fault. It's their fault. Right. Because when you ask something like, where's the support? They'll be like, well, if you're a business owner, you have no support or some line like that. But when you um, want to take money out of your account. Uh, yeah, yeah your money. <laughs> yeah. It's so interesting, though, that you brought up the whole Larry and Kobe Bryant thing, because I, I remember that so many times Larry was talked up in our morning meetings, uh, the owner of Smart Circle or whatever his ridiculous title is. And um, that was always it. You know, he if you want to go out and network with someone who lives next to Kobe Bryant, this guy is, has a house next to Kobe Bryant. Yeah. And 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 it's just it showcases number one impressive sure that that's you know back in the 20 teens i mean kobe bryant yeah well who wouldn't want to go visit the guy who lives next to kobe bryant right um but it just shows you that how much of it is a script because you yeah. heard this in jersey i heard this in chicago well lombard illinois chicago i love um, how they do that they tell you the offices in like chicago oh yeah big city and it's like 30 miles Four, outside you're like what? 45 minutes in the northwest suburbs of chicago yeah, yeah. yeah. so so my my first owner who is a, a regional kim york but did you ever hear kim paul no i <laughs> i know you're gonna oh be upset that i never heard i love of it but... no it amazes me because when when i was in smart circle she was like one of the goddesses she was like yeah. she was the, the head of the hair iron campaign um she became a regional consultant i guess no one knows who she is. And that just yeah. stuns me because she is supposedly such a big deal, but no one knows who she is. Anyway. Yeah, they're they're a big deal in like in smart circle, but once you're yeah. outside of it, it's like, who are you? But even within smart circle, it's like, and, and you and I worked there at the same time. Yeah. I would have thought you would have at least heard her name before, but the fact no, that you didn't is amazing to me. Right. But the reason I brought her up is the fact that she she was so clueless about every uh, everything else other than smart circle yeah i feel like she probably had to look up kobe bryant's name online she probably yeah. had no idea who he was well i mean who has the time to do anything but right. smart circle at that point yeah it was like yeah another weird mentality thing is uh what what i got what what do i have to do on the weekends yeah. I, I didn't know what to do on the weekends because i'm like i have two days to do nothing the hell do i do because i'm used to working on the saturday mm -hmm. Like, and Sunday is just getting prepared for the rest of the week. So it's not yeah. really a weekend. That that was a just a weird mentality yeah. shift there. I don't know. Well, cause, yeah, because in Smart Circle, our weekends are like, what, Monday, Tuesday, usually? Or something like that, if we get a day off anyway? Yeah, I, I worked, I, I probably different for the door-to-door. -door. Like, yeah. we were Monday through Saturday. Like, yeah. I was in from nine. My day was probably nine to... 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, if I had to have a critical conversation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I probably put in probably 70 to 85, 75 to 85 hours every week for damn nine years. For nine years. So if, if we do, yeah, if we did 14 hours um, or let's say 12, 10, 12 hours a day for six days a week times 52 weeks a year times nine years. I'm not even going to do the math on that because that's yeah, just, I think that's too depressing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, and then I was, I was just going to say, I never cracked. I never made more than 30. Like th I think the most I made in a year was 33,000. So my average was, and the average on the power campaign and probably Verizon. And there's, of course, people are going to say like there's outliers. There's people yeah. that make good money, but they're probably just good salespeople. They're not going to get to uh, mm -hmm. an ownership position, but yeah, I think most of the guys were making between like 25 to like 28,000. So mm -hmm. not, e not even hitting, right. not even like reaching poverty. They're just below it. <laughs> yeah. So, well, if it, if you want to take a positive away from that, you made $33,000 a year. You probably made more than most of the owners that you knew. Yeah. I was, I was just, you beat me to it because I know. Uh, yeah. So my owner, one of the reasons when he told me he was quitting, he was like, Mike, for the last six months, I've probably lost forty thousand dollars. 
I'm in the business of making money, not losing money. I'm like, completely good point there mm-hmm. uh, because it's just the rent and like the Herb Joy stuff, the, the overhead on that. Like you got to pay your recruiters. You got to pay random stuff. Yeah. But like if you're not bringing any money in, it's going out somewhere yeah. and it's going out to your own company. Like yeah, to yeah. Smart Circle. Yeah. yeah. And, and I know you, you mentioned that before. Yeah. The, the accountants, the tax people, the, um, the recruiting people that Smart Circle makes you use, right? You have no, even though you're an owner, you have no autonomy in deciding, well, maybe I want to do my own business taxes. Uh, maybe yeah. I want to hire someone else that I, maybe I know a good accountant and they'll give me a rate, a good it's deal. A, the recruiting is is a big expense because um, like that stuff is no joke. And I know Smart Circle gets a pretty good discount from like, zip recruiter monster all those ones until they find out what's going on probably yeah. um but they get a pretty good discount but it's so much money that's just it, it's like forced out of the account like you said you're forced to use it and it's like where what if i want to do my own recruiting or what if i want to write my own ads and then it's like ooh, you're going against the system mm-hmm. can't do that but um what was i going to say yeah it's just I don't know. It's got to go. It's got to go. Oh, yeah. So one of the last conversations I had uh, with my last manager, the the kid who was running the Verizon campaign. um, So as team leaders, we were always defending the, oh, is this a pyramid scheme conversation? So I got really, really good at handling that one. So I pick up two of the girls that were on my team. I pick, pick them up. And one of the girls just straight up goes, she's like, I'm convinced this is just a great big giant pyramid scheme that Larry runs where he has all these offices pay him for recruiting and all this stuff. And I was like, no, no, that's not true. Nailed it on the head though. And then later later that, yeah, I was like, wow, you're pretty smart. Like really, really good job there. But uh, later that day we have a a leaders meeting at 10 o'clock at night. um, And she says the same thing to our manager. And instead of turning it around and flipping the script, he goes, Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a hundred percent. This is a great big pyramid scheme. Like this is how it works. Like I pay money to Herb Joy. I pay money to the recruiters. Like Larry runs all that. It's definitely a pyramid scheme. I'm sitting there. I'm just like, oh, what? You can't, you're the owner. You No. I was just like, what, what is going on here? And, that, and that's the, the one that quit, but I think he's back in the business, which is funny, but. You think he's back in the business? I actually know he is, but. <laughs> Wow. So he admitted it was so, okay. Uh, another one of these, another one of these, I didn't think I'd ever hear it, but okay. So he was an owner. He admitted in a meeting with multiple people that this Probably is in fact a pyramid people, scheme, 15 some people. This is and a pyramid scheme. And how in detail. And he's back in. Yeah. Hmm. Funny, right? Well, it's I think the, it's all the relationships, though. Like, I know why he went back because he had a really good relationship with okay. his, his old owner. So that's yeah. that's the thing. Like in the beginning, you asked me what kept me. It's the people. Yeah. You build such good relationships with the people because you can't build them with anybody else because you have no time. Yeah. So you build them like like I, if if my old manager called me right now and said, "Hey, like, you want to hang out or something?" I might say, "Yeah," because he's a cool dude. We have a lot in common, but. I had no time to hang out with my own friends. Yeah. It's it's crazy how that works. I I hope he's uh doing okay like the like I don't know. It, I'm not his I'm not him. Like he could do whatever he wants obviously, but he'll learn. Yeah. And and like you said earlier, I think um w- with so much of what we talked about today, it goes back to this quote you said and I wrote it down. That's just how it works. And I think that's the final explanation of the smart circle devil court machine when we're asking for these whys. Like, why don't, why is it so difficult for people to get out? Why is it so difficult to see the red flags? Yeah. That's just how it works. And I mean, Larry, to his credit, he established this, this scammy, shady Scientology based business model 40 some years ago. DS Max, look it up. Yep, yep. Oh, um, I've seen the uh, the, still the original website. Yeah. Yep. What was the uh, the Devil Core one? Yeah. Devil Corp. Yep. And it's it's funny, like we were 
some of the good owners would straight up like talk about this stuff. Like we talked about the ripoff reports. We talked about the the crappy uh, reviews on Glassdoor and we were trained how to combat those things. So now these these videos and all this stuff, this is just another thing yeah. that the leaders and owners are going to have to learn to overcome. Sure. And like, I don't have to do that in my current job. I don't have to... <laughs> I don't yeah. have to defend what I do. Um, you you don't have to defend the indefensible. Yes. Which like, is, is what is happening every day in these offices. I can have conversations with people and be, be happy about talking about what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. Like at, at Smart Circle, like, do you think I wanted to tell people I knock on doors in like all kinds of weather to make, to barely make minimum wage? Like, no, there's no, there's nothing cool or exciting about that. Um, but that's just how it works. The business has a way of just keeping you in. Like one of the first things that, that grabbed me was I got taken on a trip to Jamaica. Yeah. And actually that's funny. Uh, that's when I learned what smart circle was. Cause they don't tell you, they don't use the word smart circle. Nope. They so never I'm like, do. I'm like six months in and we get, I get taken to the R and R weekend. And we're like checking in at the hotel in Jamaica and it says smart circle over there. And one of the guys that, that was on my team, he's like, are we smart circle? I was like, well, it says our names there. So I guess That's hmm. like, what? Ugh. I mean, Hey, like I said, like if someone wants to do it and they, they get recruited and they start like take out of it, what you can yeah. like learn, learn some sales skills, learn some leadership skills, like, but be careful, like look for the red flags, like, yeah. Look at like, if something doesn't seem right, you're probably right about it. If it seems too good to be true, it is. And it took me nine years, to, it was nine years to learn that one the hard way. But if I could stop someone from uh, spending nine years of their life learning that, then that's all I look for. But yeah, that's, it, it works and it, it, it works well. Like there are, people are doing second round interviews tomorrow. Someone will start on Monday and it'll keep Hopefully, well, I don't know how much longer, obviously, but we, we, we can only do what we can do, right? Absolutely. And, um, and, and thank you for, for sharing the stories, because like we mentioned before, it's um, especially if, if this is, this is new self-disclosure for you yeah. to everybody. Um, and, you know, you're, this video is going to circulate around the offices, just like every other video. Um, I got a message a few weeks ago from uh, a, an admin who was on her way out, who I guess was sent the videos by her owner to do homework on, which well, I'm fine with. Cause I mean, how stupid is that on the owner's side? Yeah. Like, what the hell? But I mean, it, it gets us views. So yeah. it gets, it gets the information out there a little bit more. So, uh, so we appreciate that, but, uh, um, but yeah, the, the, they will continue to adapt. Um, we can only be nuisances at this point. I mean, I'm not naive. I, I don't think yeah. that, I don't think these videos or um, Juicy Rhino or even all the fantastic work that is happening on the Devil Corp subreddit. If if you're watching this video, you have not gone to the Devil Corp subreddit, go. Yeah. There is amazing work happening on or the Devil Corp they subreddit. They don't know who Juicy Rhino is. If you want yes. to laugh, like that's, yep. it's so like, I remember I would, like I, I would sit in my car some days before the field and all that just to have some like I would drop the guys off and that's when I would eat lunch honestly I would go somewhere get my own lunch because you don't have time to eat yeah. um just watching or just reading some of his little memes and all that they're like wow you're nailing it on the head right now mm -hmm. like so accurate and he wasn't even in the business right? no no that was all from third party uh learning yeah. about the business yeah yeah, I mean, I when I wrote you that email, I think I, I ended with, man, I could really write a book or yeah, something. Yeah, like, that's exactly could. what you said. I definitely could. And like, I probably should. Because pe people will read it. Yeah. People will read it. And and it can it can also serve as a, a great warning. But I yeah, think... I should put uh, it in uh, the uh, mandatory reading for uh, summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, but yeah, I, I think this is just another good example of if you have a story, put it out there. It, it doesn't yeah. have to be a video like this. Uh, it can be a, an, a, a, an anonymous posting on the Devil Corp subreddit. 
And you yeah. can even name offices because there's Google searchable. If you well, name probably either change their name or don't, don't exist anymore. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> but that's, but that's also why it's so important because we yeah. keep a record of those things um, or make a, make a video with just voice. So you don't have to show your face or whatever it is, but get your story out there yeah. because the more stories like yours, Mike's like everybody that decides to do a video or everyone that likes to, that wants to post about it on, on Reddit, it adds to the credibility yeah. of everybody that we've talked to the past five years so that smart circle can't say oh those are old videos or because you know they, they, they say juice we don't say juice anymore uh you know they're, they're talking about outdated stuff no yeah. we're we're still talking about things that are very relevant and these companies that are preying on desperate people i i, yeah. I can't tell you how it many is. interviews i've heard the the word desperate you said it earlier too yeah 100 percent. yeah um they're preying on college students. They're going to college job fairs. They're, they're, yeah. th there's so many tentacles to this insidious operation that any new information about it is going to help. Yeah, People no, will find it. Yeah, they're, and that's like the owners and nationals, regionals, they're, like you just said, they're always trying to find new ways to recruit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, it's been a year and a half for me. I don't know. Like we started having trouble with like LinkedIn and ZipRecruiter and all that. Like our stuff was getting flagged. So I don't know how that is now, but it, it was starting back then. So I'm sure it's worse, but um, yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, I mean, credit to you, you're doing what you can. So really all we can do is spread the word, right? Yeah.